In the last episode, Oda Nobunaga went to war with the radical Iko Iki and other militant sects of Buddhist monks, laying siege to Ishiyama Honganji, Nagashima, and burning Inryakuji Temple to the ground while slaughtering thousands. Now, as Shogun Ashikaga Yoshiaki desperately reaches out for aid against the oppressive Oda clan, the mighty Takeda Shingen will answer the call and head to war. By 1572, the situation in and around the capital was devastating. Oda Nobunaga, the leader of the once minor power from Owari province, had risen to prominence and taken Kyoto and the shogunate captive. Using his mighty armies and iron grip, Nobunaga had laid siege to central Japan, going to war with all who stood against him. So far, we have seen his battles against the Miyoshi, the Azai, the Asakura, and the radical followers of the Jodo Shinshu faith, known as the Iko Iki. And while his followers viewed him as a visionary trying to unify the land, his enemies obviously viewed him as a power-hungry tyrant. And no one felt his oppression more than Shogun Ashikaga Yoshiaki. Yoshiaki had of course been delivered to the capital by Nobunaga. Yet, instead of simply enjoying the luxury of his position as Shogun, he followed in the same footsteps as the previous shogun, Ashikaga Yoshiteru, who had made an attempt to break the shogunate free from external influences. Yoshiaki had initially believed that he was to have independence and power once he was formally made the shogun. Yet in reality, all the power rested in the hands of the cunning Nobunaga. Thus, for the past several years, Yoshiaki had been reaching out to many clans in central Japan requesting they take up arms against the Oda in attempts to drive them out of the capital. However, by 1572, we can see that none have proven capable enough to do so. This leads us to his latest bid, reaching out to the Mori and the Takeda. As we established in the last video, the Mori were unwilling to head to war against the Oda at this time, most likely due to other pressing issues I have previously highlighted. Yet, the situation was different for the Takeda. In the east, the balance of power had changed drastically ever since the fall of the Imagawa in 1568. This left the three most powerful clans in the east, the Takeda, the Hojo, and the Uesugi in a constant state of conflict, with the most noticeable exchange of territory being the Takeda taking over a portion of Kotsuke. And it was the Takeda, led by the legendary Takeda Shingen, who now appeared to be the greatest power in the East. And this was for several reasons. First off was Shingen's sphere of influence, controlling three rich provinces, thereby granting him the capability to field a massive army. Not to mention the fact that his clan was impressively stable, even in an age ripe with internal betrayal. However, this stability had not come without casualties, as in 1567, he was forced to order his firstborn son and heir, Takeda Yoshinobu, to commit seppuku, following disagreements between the two and a failed attempt to rally Shingen's loyal generals against him and seize power. After Yoshinobu's death, Shingen's somewhat inbred and bastard son, Takeda Katsuyori, now stood to be the heir to the clan. But to add to Shingen's stability, he also possessed one of the finest warbands in the entire country. What had previously been known as the 24 Generals of Takeda Shingen had indeed shrunk over time, yet we can still see important figures such as Baba Nobuharu, Kosaka Masanobu, Yamagata Masakage, Naito Masatoyo, and Sanada Yukitaka along with his sons. These and other generals were behind many of Shingen's finest victories and were a prime example why the Takeda were able to flourish and grow to their current size and prominence. Although outside of the Takeda clan, 
Two other external factors had also given rise to Shingen's position. The most obvious was the death of Hojo Ujiyasu, the Lion of Sagami. Ujiyasu had been a mighty daimyo, maintaining Hojo rule over Kanto, albeit with little expansion as well. He had frequently fought against the Takeda and Uesugi, yet in 1570, he finally passed away. Fearing a drop in stability if the wars continued, his son Hojo Ujimasa quickly made peace with Shingen. However, an arguably greater threat to the Takeda was the formidable Uesugi Kenshin, who had valiantly fought Shingen to a standstill years ago at Kawanakajima. Yet in recent years, it appeared Kenshin was less inclined to do battle with Shingen, and more interested in expanding Uesugi influence to the northwest, as by the 1570s, we can see that the Uesugi clan had pushed into Echu, subjugating the local Jinbo clan and seizing the entirety of the province. Although this of course brought Kenshin into further conflict against the Ikoiki, who ruled over the neighboring province of Kaga. It is these factors that may have aided in Shingen's decision to answer Shogun Yoshiaki's pleas for aid. However, if he was to go to war with the Oda, he would first need to deal with their Tokugawa allies. The Takeda had actually already gone to war with the Tokugawa in 1571, when Shingen began launching attacks against the Tokugawa fortress of Taketenjin. Thus, continuing a more determined offensive against them would not be seen as out of the ordinary. On top of that, there is another reason why Shingen would want to head west. It is clear that Takeda Shingen for some time now had desired to rule not just his region, but in fact the entire land. However, this dream had become an unrealistic one due to his current position in correlation to other powerful rivals in the east. Yet by 1572, with all of the established reasons I have just listed, Shingen now possessed the prime capability to bring war to the Oda, and perhaps launch a campaign to seize the entire country for himself. What is also of extreme importance to note, and perhaps an even greater reason for Shingen to march on the capital, is the fact that the Takeda clan, if need be, could trace their lineage back to the Seiwa Genji branch of the Minamoto clan, essentially meaning that Takeda Shingen could officially become the new shogun if he were to take Kyoto, destroy the Ashikaga, and create a Takeda shogunate. Of all the threats Nobunaga had to face, the Takeda would soon shoot to the forefront, as they were indeed the mightiest of all Nobunaga's rivals. Beginning in late 1572, Shingen embarked on his grand conquest against the Oda. As previously established, his initial task would be to subdue the Tokugawa clan. His first target would be the Tokugawa mountain stronghold of Futamata, an ideal spot he could then use as a base of operations as he marched against the new Tokugawa power base of Hamamatsu. Shingen entrusted his son and heir, Katsuyori, to seize the castle, and it is here that we can see that Katsuyori was actually a competent commander, cutting the water supply to Futamata, thus causing it to quickly surrender to the Takeda by January of 1573. Taimyo Tokugawa Ieyasu was now definitely in a precarious situation, as Shingen was now marching through Totomi at the head of a massive army, numbering around 28,000 strong. Upon hearing of Shingen's advance, Oda Nobunaga quickly sent aid to Ieyasu, whose numbers now grew to a meager 11,000. Shingen, understanding his real target was Nobunaga, knew that the Tokugawa were not capable of stopping him in the field, yet they needed to be dealt with nonetheless. Thus, he initially planned on leaving a token force behind to lay siege to Ieyasu's stronghold at Hamamatsu, locking the Tokugawa forces down while his main body pressed forth against the Oda. However, in reality, everything solely depended on what action Ieyasu would take. All of the Tokugawa and reinforcing Oda generals agreed that defending Hamamatsu was their best bet on survival. Even if Shingen left a token force behind to mask the castle, Tokugawa forces stood a better chance of breaking the siege and striking out at the Takeda rear than actually attempting a full assault against Shingen. 
Fighting the Takeda in the open was also discouraged due to the growing legend of the Takeda cavalry. Throughout Shingen's campaigns, his cavalry had gained vast renown for their skill, ferocity, and numbers. So much so that they had earned the nickname the Demon Horsemen of Kai, striking fear into anyone who dared face the Takeda in the field. But of course, a full frontal assault was exactly what Ieyasu had in mind. If one thing could be said about Ieyasu, he had a fighting spirit. Even when severely disadvantaged, he would rather boldly take the fight to his enemy than hide behind a wall. Thus, he gave the order to make ready for battle and marched out from Hamamatsu to engage the Takeda forces that had been amassing just to the north at Mikatagahara. Shingen, upon hearing of Ieyasu's march, immediately deployed his army in a formation to envelop the Tokugawa. As snow began to fall on January 25th, the battle began. The Tokugawa took the initiative, opened firing on the Takeda forward ranks. Ieyasu had hoped that by implementing mass firearms, he would discourage the use of the Takeda cavalry, and at first, it seemed like that might be the case. As Shingen began his actions by ordering a general charge of his vanguard samurai under the command of Naito Masatoyo, who began clashing with frontline Oda troops. Under extreme pressure, the Oda Tokugawa line held strong against the initial wave of Tokugawa forces. Yet, it was then that Shingen unleashed two waves of his demon horsemen. The first wave was under the command of Yamagata Masakage. The Takeda cavalry shredded through the Oda lines before pulling out for the second wave led by Takeda Katsuyori. The second wave crashed into the Tokugawa main body, annihilating the Tokugawa resolve, sending Ieyasu's forces reeling. Ieyasu, still holding strong, attempted to rally his faltering army. Yet as his forces began to break, Shingen bared down upon him with everything, ordering a full assault of his main body. As the Takeda forces closed in on Ieyasu, he began to engage in melee combat while desperately attempting to issue commands. Seeing the disarray of the situation, the commander Ieyasu had left in charge of Hamamatsu, Natsume Yoshinobu, quickly rode in to convince Ieyasu to call for a full retreat. When Ieyasu refused, Yoshinobu took control of the situation. He grabbed the reins of Ieyasu's horse and spun him around. He then gave Ieyasu's horse a hard jab to its rear, which caused it to charge off back towards the castle. Yoshinobu followed this up by attempting to mislead the Takeda by crying out that he was Ieyasu, and then rushed into the fray where he would be slain. Ieyasu would make it back into Hamamatsu with a small contingent of samurai. Immediately, the Tokugawa retainer Tori Mototara began barring the main gate. Yet, it was then that Ieyasu had a brilliant yet risky idea. He stopped Mototara from closing the main gate, and instead ordered it to be kept open for any other survivors. In addition, he also ordered bonfires to be lit and a drum to be played to aid in guiding his scattered soldiers back home. He knew that this could be regarded by the Takeda two different ways. They could either see it for what it was, an open invitation to charge in and seize the castle, or, with any luck, they might perceive it as a trap and choose not to engage. Fortunately for Ieyasu, when the Takeda commanders Baba Nobuharu and Yamagata Masakage closed in on Hamamatsu, they did indeed perceive it as possibly a trap by the Tokugawa, thus deciding to make camp and watch over the fortress for any further developments. In aims to drive off this small contingent of Takeda forces outside of Hamamatsu, Tokugawa forces took action later that evening, launching a successful night raid. Catching the Takeda soldiers off guard, they pushed them back to a small ravine where many Takeda troops were trapped and gunned down by Tokugawa matchlock Tepo. With winter setting in, and an unwillingness to engage in a winter siege, now seeing the boldness of the Tokugawa, Shingen ordered his forces to return home until the thaw of spring, where he could then resume his campaign. Ieyasu had narrowly survived and succeeded in temporarily halting the Takeda advance. Months later, in the spring of 1573, Shingen began a new campaign against the Tokugawa. 
this time striking deep into Mikawa. Once again, the threat of his massive army put Ieyasu in a tight position, although tragedy would soon occur for the Takeda. Takeda Shingen, at the height of his power, died. Some say he had long been ill and finally succumbed to sickness, while another plausible scenario indicates that while he was laying siege to the Tokugawa stronghold of Noda, he was shot by a Tokugawa sniper. Whatever the case, Shingen was dead, and the Takeda were robbed of their greatest leader. Initially, they made attempts to keep Shingen's death a secret in aims to keep his legendary status and fear he instilled alive and well. Yet, in time, the truth got out, and formally, power passed on to his son, Takeda Katsuyori, who maintained his father's stalwart devotion to march west and take on the Oda. For a final note, it is said that upon hearing of Shingen's passing, his great rival, Uesugi Kenshin, who had engaged him in five epic clashes over the Kawanakajima plain, wept at the loss of such a worthy adversary. So, what can we learn? By 1572, Ashikaga Yoshiaki was desperately trying to rid the capital of Oda Nobunaga, reaching out to powerful lords who could make moves against the Oda. In late 1572, the great Takeda Shingen responded and began marching against the Oda-allied Tokugawa clan. He easily seized the Tokugawa stronghold of Futamata and began making preparations to mask the Tokugawa power base of Hamamatsu allowing his armies to continue on to fight the Oda. Yet daimyo Tokugawa Ieyasu would surprisingly ride out against the Takeda and meet Shingen at the Battle of Mikatagahara. Ieyasu's forces would be utterly crushed in large part due to the devastating Takeda cavalry. Yet Ieyasu would survive the battle and allow his forces to make a successful retreat by fooling the Takeda. In the spring of 1573, Shingen renewed his assault against the Tokugawa and it is during the siege of Noda Castle where he would tragically meet his end, leaving his son, Takeda Katsuyori, in charge of the mighty Takeda clan. In the next episode, Nobunaga lays siege to Odani Castle in aims to finish the war against the Azai and Asakura. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.